ain't saying she a gold digger. But she ain't messing with no broke, broke. As far as people are concerned, we were living at a palace, and we were in a cottage we on, were a living pa on, on palace, palace grounds. grounds. Yeah. Kensington Palace sounds very regal. Of course it does. It says palace in the name. But Nottingham Cottage was so small. Oh, boo -hoo. Let me play a sad song for you on the world's smallest violin. Netflix's Harry and Meghan series is a six hour pre recorded admission of guilt. Nothing more. The last three episodes show the Markles betraying themselves with every crooked smile, crocodile tear, and choreographed soapbox rant. And the message they have for the audience is simple from the show bow down, shut up, and worship them as they separate you from your wallet. But in a time of monsters, those who stand up are heroes. So when it really comes right down to it, Harry and Meghan are nothing but bottom drawer celebrity name droppers whining about living in a palace, complaining about privacy from the comfort of their very own reality show. What's going on, everybody? I hope all of you have had an amazing week. My friends, my best wishes to you and yours. Netflix paid a king's ransom to hire a half-wit finger puppet and a D-list camera hog just to film them when they're starting a four-star blaze. He got Harry attacking his brother, calling his father the king a liar, and even insulting the late queen, his grandmother. But the sideshow isn't only a paycheck for the Markles, it's a narcotic fix to satisfy their fevered addiction to fame and to feed their compulsive habit of envying everyone. I mean, it was great. It was all so over the top. I think most people were just like... What is happening? Elton John's performing. I couldn't find my mom because she had like beeline to the stage to just watch Elton sing. In the beginning, the royals fully embraced Megan. They catered to her every whim, granting her every wish. They wanted her to know that she was welcome. She was one of them. They even brought in a gospel choir. Her culture represented in that wedding, amazing. I loved it. And I thought it was really courageous and breaking boundaries, but not trying to. And on that day, on the wedding day, that's when the bubble actually burst for those who are paying attention. That's when you had a narcissist unmask herself, transforming St. George's Chapel into an Oscars after party, where she filled all the pews with strangers and celebrities she never knew and never had met, and no one, none of her family. Lead the way with compassion. That's like the centerpiece, the masthead for their Archwell Foundation. Well, where was the compassion for her father, the man who had paid for her entire life, who was the shoulder to cry on, who lifted her up when she was down and helped her smile? Where were the rest of her family members except for her mother? None of them seemed to fit into any of her grand designs, any of her delusions of grandeur or her activist suit messaging machine. But on a bright note, Princess Pinocchio did let the cat out of the bag. This foreign organism. And the entire thing goes... <laughs> What is that? What is it doing here? It doesn't look like us. It doesn't move like us. We don't like it. Get it off of us. The crown has lasted for a thousand years, and it is going to outlast an infection from a cheap parasite in high hills. I'm just thankful, I have to admit, for a little bit of the honesty that's coming from Meg's subconscious. You know, it's kind of like a scorpion who stung itself because it was exposed to just too much heat. And then we had a walkabout in Liverpool. I mean, there was a group of women, and one of them said to me, what you're doing to your father is not right. And then my entire center was rocked to its core. Like enough, enough of the pain, enough of the, the suffering. Serious? And that takes us right into line number one. You cannot have a self-professed, independent, strong female fighter, you know, a rule-breaking maverick simultaneously playing a victim who needs her diapers changed every time she's confronted by a word from a stranger. No, it doesn't work. It doesn't compute. That's why it's false. And that's why so many people call her and call both of them together frauds. And if she can't take the public heat, she needs to exit stage left right out of the limelight. Unfortunately, there are a lot of strange birds who are suckers for pain. What was going through your head when you saw her coming? Look at, look at me, look what I got. <laughs> oh look, my what gosh. I, look what I found. Harry, why are you looking at her like you're a pimply, googly-eyed teenager going, oh, look what I got. You are the Prince of England. You married an almost 40-something wannabe casting couch queen who realized late in life she was never going to be Hollywood royalty. Therapy, Harry. Therapy. 
See, the first three episodes were more like a merry-go-round of praise for the tax-paying pickpockets. And that all was all leading up, all building up, teasing us to the mudsling that was coming in the last half of Megathon. And boy, oh boy, was there a lot of complaining. I mean, they complained about everything from living in a palace... As far as people were concerned, we were living at a palace. And we were, in a cottage we on, were a living pa- on, on palace, palace grounds. grounds. But Nottingham Cottage was so small. To droning on about money. You know, for my whole life, the purse strings have been controlled by my father. Harry, I thought you wanted to be independent. I thought you wanted to stand up on your own two feet, put your head high, put your chest out, and not depend on daddy anymore. But I understand. We all get it. You know, it's very hard for a waster without skills. Well, invariably, the cameras returned to Megan as she recalled her sad days of suffering where only a few people noticed. Yeah, well, I guess, and also thank you for asking, because not many people have asked if I'm okay. But it's, uh, it's a very real thing to be going through behind the scenes. But not to worry, she paid an army of sycophants to remind her, to give her a little bit of emotional high, to tell her that you know the sun does shine out of your back end and absolutely nothing is ever your fault. And you're thinking, oh, my God, how are you managing this? And yet you can still put a smile on your face, because you did have a smile. Which takes us straight into lie two. See, Megflix wasn't organic. It was all pre-planned right before the official breakup. See, Harry had run into CEO Bob Iger of Disney in 2019. That's when he begged the man to get a job for his wife. And at the same time, the couple had already filed trademark papers with the UK's intellectual property office for Sussex Royal because they wanted to stitch their titles into pajamas, diapers, poster boards, anything they could make a buck off of. Thank goodness that the queen reigned them in. Thank God Her Majesty laid down the law and told them royals do not profit from their name didn't even have the temerity to ask for permission. But see, so everything you're seeing right now, the Netflix series, you know, the book from Harry called Spare that's about to come out, the Spotify podcast, all of that is a byproduct of Harry and Meghan finally accepting the reality that one day soon they wouldn't be the most famous royals in the world. Once his brother William was crowned king, their time was done. So they charted a new course. The couple decided to take their revenge and make themselves the celebrity of celebrities, the most famous ex-royals. Translation, while they were sitting there kissing their family, smiling to all the crowds of millions who still loved them, he had the pair of cutthroats strategize to create a tell-all of invented lies, all cobbled together and edited so they could draw you in and make you believe they never betrayed anyone. As a matter of fact, they will tell you it's quite the opposite. They were righteous crusaders, true victims of the crown and press. But you know what? The hustler and the hater actually started this whole fiasco on March of 2020. That was their last day when they performed their final official duties loafing on Britain's dime. Um, Hi, so we're here on uh, Wednesday. And say there's something of March. But you know what's really worse than that is that they actually rubber stamped Netflix's lies. All interviews were finished and completed by August of 2022. Now, for anybody who knows who's worked on a production set or anybody who's ever watched, you know, a 4K or Blu-ray movie and you look at the behind the scenes for how a movie or television show is made, you know that right when filming is done, all the real work begins. So when you had Her Majesty the Queen was dying, you had Harry taking about a dozen meetings a day. When she was suffering and agonizing pain, guess what did you have? You had Megan taking about 100 phone calls a week. Did they ever consider once to show their true humanity? You know what? We're going to put our grievances aside. Whatever problems we have, they're done with for right now. We're going to fly to the UK. We're going to be by her side. We're going to do everything we can to show her our love. That's what true human beings would do. That's what people with compassion would do. But these are foul fiends. My wife and I believe the way you're born should not dictate your ability to survive. We've partnered with the team here to create the NAACP Archwell 
Digital Civil Rights Award. So see, that's why they're having a little bit of problems with their Netflix series. Yeah, it had high ratings because actually had all the hate watching, all the curiosity, but it was designed to draw you in, to gain your sympathy, to separate you from the dollars, pounds, and yens that you hold on to. It was designed in order to build up their network of radical activists. Now make yourself cry. Yeah. Oh, I can do that so well. Okay. Oh my God, it's crazy. You're like, Megan, one tear, left eye, go. Give me three seconds. And of course, what happened? Surprise, surprise. The master of emotions manipulated a halfwit and turned him into a bona fide hater who believed the lie so much he turned into a traitor. It was terrifying to have my brother um, scream and shout at me and my father say things that just simply weren't true. And, and my grandmother, you know, quietly sit there and, and sort of take it all in. And the plan started to come together. In 2018, we'd already talked about perhaps moving to New Zealand. And that never transpired. What if we move to Canada? If you want us to go and do things on behalf of the Queen, we'll go and do it. And we'll pay for it ourselves. How gracious of you, Harry, that both of y'all wanted to act like adults and actually take responsibility and pay for your own lives. Bravo. And then they said, according to them, that when that wasn't accepted, they sweetened the deal. You know, if this wasn't going to work out, then we would be willing to relinquish our Sussex titles if need be. So that was... That's the plan. That was the plan. Mm. But you and I both know that if Harry and Meghan actually wanted to realize this imaginary, invisible paradise where they could have peace, privacy, and serenity, all they had to do was give up their titles. And they could have done that any time of night or day. What have you heard so far? Me, I've heard crickets. You know why? Because it's a con. Let's make a fortune. And that leads right into line number three. Megflix is the climax of Crying Wolf for six years. They're using this pity party production in order to make celebrity friends and to secure some corporate sponsors because they realize that one day they're going to need a fallback plan. Like the people of England started to turn against them. Their family was turning against them. So they had to hot foot it out of the UK and eventually beat feet from Canada and make it back to Los Angeles. We are on the freedom flight. <laughs> we are leaving Canada and we are headed to Los Angeles. I wonder what would have happened to us had we not gone out when we did. So that leads us right into line number four. What you have is they are desperate for you to believe that they are absolutely sincere, that they are average and ordinary folk just like you and me. Now, that's one of the biggest failures of Megflix, not only for the show, but in their everyday life, in their reality, because most people believe that, look at their life, they have a perfect existence. They have nothing to worry about. I mean, forget about how much they bitch and moan and winch. Their cupboards and refrigerators are full. They're not worried about gas or electric bills. They travel wherever they want to go. Their children are protected. They have security. It's easy. But then they turn around and gaslight a global audience while there's true human suffering going on. You got children who are being trafficked as sex slaves. You have veterans who are being abused. You got homeless who outnumber the pigeons on the street. And mothers and fathers on every continent are trying to put food on the table. Hell, when I was seven years old, I was kidnapped and taken high into the mountains of Greece, chained to a basement pillar and beaten on and off for a year before my mother had rescued me. Do you hear me whining about it? I'm only bringing it up now to show you an example. That happened to me. I made it a part of me. I owned it. I defeated my giant. I took strength from it. What do they do? Whenever Megan sees an extra camera or two, which is exactly what she wants because she wants 24-7 coverage, she says the world is cruel. It's out outside of the morning. Oh, she's waking up. It does this. Oh, my God. We're just circling. Now, before you go off and say, oh, man, I feel sorry for her. I think I pity her. It's 5 a.m. Remember, this is the life they chose. They can leave it. They can exit it anytime they want. You want to feel bad for someone? You want to say something cruel? Feel pity for their children who they use as part-time props. And I didn't have that big family. It's so cool. He's down. He's down. You got it. You got it. You so when I was pregnant with Archie... I was just so excited. And full-time witnesses that watch Megan rewrite history as she maps out every inch of the way to get her way. And it's not our home, but we're grateful. But there's a world in which it could be our home. <laughs> 
The one great thing we've learned from Harry and Meghan, beyond any shadow of a doubt, is that nobility isn't a product of blood, and it can't be bought by fame. It is born of character. It is fought for. It is earned, and it is honored. Now, if you like this video, if you found value in it, you want me to continue to dig in and research at Meghan and Harry and share it with you, all you got to do is subscribe, like, share, and leave your thoughts and questions in the comments down below. And remember, we never bow down. We never bend the knee. Always forward.